tell people what sickle cell anemia is and why it's amenable to this type of therapy. Right. So sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation that causes the red blood cell to sickle. So they form a sickle form. And so they are, they're not able to uh, sort of, uh, you know, properly function. And then sometimes they can aggregate. And then this can cause occlusion in the blood vessel and can cause serious problems. And, um, and so these red blood cells are made by uh, progenitor or stem cells uh, in the body um, that produce these red blood cells. And so one idea for treating- And it's a simple mutation. It's a simple, it's a it's single- a, It's a single point mutation correct. that changes one amino acid. And That's that right. one amino acid based on one base pair change, yep. I can't remember what it is. It's an right. alanine to a glycine or something. It's, right. it's quite trivial, yep. um, is what leads to all of this bad, this downstream bad, exactly. badness you talk about. Um, but now if you, so current treatment for these patients is blood transfusions, right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's an awful disease yeah. and these patients Very experience painful. unbearable pain. Right. Um, as an aside, some might ask, why does this disease exist? Why didn't Darwin get rid of this? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out there's an advantage to having mm -hmm. the trait. For malaria. Right, so it turns out that if you have one copy of the sickle gene and the other one is normal, you have normal looking red blood cells. You don't get the disease, but you actually get protection, as you said, from malaria. Mm -hmm. So that would keep this propagating, particularly in a malaria rich area like Africa. This is why it's much more prevalent in a black population than a white population, mm -hmm. because it offered some benefit. But if you have two copies of the gene, you get mm -hmm. the sickling. Those are not the people that are passing on their genes historically. They would have perished mm -hmm. before reproduction. Mm -hmm. And, and also just perished in, in a great deal of pain. But nevertheless, here we are today. So, okay, you have to be able to go into the bone marrow right. to make this change because right. there's no point in doing this if you have to do this every week. You want to do it one and done, right? Once. That's right. Yeah, so, well, one of the promises of gene editing is that it can provide a single treatment that is a cure for the disease. And so in the case of sickle cell, what, uh, what happens is that uh, the doctor will mobilize the stem cells, the bone marrow cells from the patient, get them to come out and be able to harvest these bone marrow cells. And they don't necessarily do this with a bone marrow aspirate. They do it by giving them medications right. that cause them to s secrete more progenitor cells into the plasma? That's right. Th th this is the, the current um, sort of practice uh, in the medical field. Okay. And so they will, they will get the patient, uh, harvest their bone marrow cells. And these cells are going to be uh, sort of modify in the laboratory uh, where uh, researchers will take the, the RNA, the, the messenger RNA for Cas9. So this will allow the cell to produce the Cas9 protein. And they will also take the guide RNA. Maybe just tell folks really quickly, sorry to interrupt you, mm -hmm. uh, Fung, but um, maybe just explain really quickly for people the relationship between DNA, RNA, messenger RNA, protein. It's the central sure. dogma, but right. that way when you say what you're about to say, they'll right. know why it works. Yeah, so so there are different ways to get a protein to the cell. Um, and, and the way that uh, proteins are made in the cell is that they're encoded in DNA, and the DNA has to be transcribed into messenger RNA, and that RNA is then translated by the ribosome into the protein. And so if you can put into a cell, either the DNA, the gene for Cas9, or the messenger RNA for Cas9, or the protein for Cas9, uh, the cell will eventually have Cas9. Because if you put in the D uh, DNA, the cell will start to make mRNA based on it, and then that R mRNA will get translated into the protein. Or if you put in mRNA, then- But how do you put it in the DNA? Isn't that the whole problem that we're trying to solve? Right, so there are different ways to put these things in. Um, so for DNA, you can um, just use a virus. You can use a virus, or you can, uh, if you're working with cells in a petri dish, you can directly uh, electroporate uh, the DNA into the cell. And this is done by zapping the cell with the electrical current. Mm. It will rupture the membrane. When the membrane ruptures, things can leak in. So if you have DNA that's outside the cell, when the cell membrane ruptures, the DNA that's outside the cell will flow into the inside of the cell and get into the cell. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is actually how people uh, treat uh, sickle cell disease, except they're not putting DNA into the cell, they're putting mRNA. So they incubate um, these uh, bone marrow stem cells that have the sickle cell uh, mutation in a bath 
of mRNA for Cas9 and the guide RNA. And the guide RNA. And separate. Then, sep These are separate. Separate. Right? Okay. Separate. And it's amazing that once those cells acquire both the mRNA for Cas9 and mm -hmm. the mRNA that is to corresponding the to the guide, yeah. it will tra it will translate mm -hmm. into a Cas9 protein. Yes. It doesn't translate guide RNA into a protein. It right. just stays there right. and they find each other. That's correct. And they, I mean, again, it's, it is so remarkable to me that biology, it's so re mm -hmm. remarkable to me that anything works uh, in this universe, but that's, <laughs> That's up there is one of those things that kind of just amazes well, me. Well, I mean, that... this is this is really the the result of the biotechnology uh, re revolution, the molecular biology, um, you know, uh, discoveries that have really under sort of paved the, the the biotechnology revolution. And now, what is the efficiency of that process? So once you go mm -hmm. ahead and put those two bits of very different RNA yeah. into uh, the proximity of yeah these bone marrow cells this can be quite quite efficient okay um, so in the in the laboratory or or in these petri dish settings uh, this can be you know approaching 100 percent okay so now within a very short period of time mm -hmm. you have cut out and also reinserted the it's just a single yeah. it's a single base pair so what are they doing what's the exact thing you're asking cas9 to do here actually for sickle cell the treatment that has recently been approved uh, at the end of last year is actually different. Okay. Um, and and the the way the treatment works is that uh, for sickle cell patients, it's been found that for some individuals who have the sickle cell mutation, um, if they also carry another mutation or, or if they somehow is able to express the fetal version of hemoglobin, mm -hmm. then their sickle cell symptoms are much, much less. And so for treating sickle cell patients with gene editing, the therapy actually goes and modifies a different gene, um, sort of modulates its expression to then allow the fetal hemoglobin gene to turn on. And why is that an easier solution than simply changing the one amino acid that's broken in the first place? Because the way it works is that it simply makes a cut um, and it doesn't uh, require the doesn't template require a change. repair. That's right.